Psalms, chapter 91, a psalm of safety in God. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Now this is not hiding from God. This secret place is your fellowship, your privacy with God. This is not with your wife, not with your children, no radio, no TV, no iPods, no computers, no telephones. When you get off to be alone with God, that's what it's all about. And what American really does that? And what we're going to see in this chapter is when you do this, you get a benefit. Even I need to start doing it. I need to get off all by myself and be with the Lord. And let Him speak to me. Especially the things that are going on in my life present. I will say, on, I will say of the Lord. This is what you say about God. He is my refuge. No one can touch you from being slain. No one can touch you if you put the Lord under your protection. A refugee is one who flees to a shelter. It is not somebody going to get you and bringing you. You've got to go. That's the point. You, no one can force you to do it. You've got to do it on your own voluntary effort to be alone with God. That's what the definition speaks in the 1828 Webster's Dictionary. So is there a time that you flee to God for a shelter? And my fortress. A fortress is a very strong hold from all troubles and problems and warfare and weather. My God. got to be your God. You cannot take these promises in these two verses when Jesus Christ is not your Savior. Or you serve another Jesus or another gospel under another spirit. He has to be your God to run. To be a refugee. And to his fortress. It's very important. You run this back to uh, Psalms 18.2. Find this in Romans 8 1. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler. Snare is a trap from Satan. Run to his protection. I wonder if Job had not had his three buddies there, what would have happened? It was this him and the Lord? Which shows you what, in the time that you should be with God, what your friends can do. And from the noisome pestilence. The 1828 Dictionary, noxious to health, hurtful, offensive to smell or other senses. It's a pestilence that is noxious. You can't stand the sight, smell of Job with his boils. Now that I know what boils are, now that I know what a rutting issue is, it's a shelter in danger or dis or distraction. It's a defense. That fortress that you run to, which is God. He shall cover thee with his feathers. Now, God doesn't have feathers. I'll show you in a minute. Under his wings, God does not have wings. Shall thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Well, All right. What is verse 4 describing? It's, it's a description 
of something that you can look at and see. It is liking a mother bird with her chicks. Isn't that kind of that Father God is described as a mother here? The motherly protection. And Jesus said, uh, when one of the gospels there, you know, I would have called on to you as a mother, you know, as a chi as a with the with the chicks. Maybe Jesus had Psalms ninety one verse four in mind. Don't run to God that has feathers and wings. Run to God that will protect you like a mother will. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. According to Ephesians 6, the truth is the sword of your weaponry, of your armor. Shield of faith, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, Ephesians 6. Your faith has to be truth. It has to be the way, the truth, and the life. If it is not, you got the wrong armor. And I don't know, is there a buckler in Ephesians 6? Something to put it all together. But bucklers would be true. God is true. Jesus Christ is true. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night. Don't worry about what's in the night. The Lord will take care of you. You know when a little child is afraid of darkness, a mother and a father will put a night light in that room. To protect them. But you know that's wrong. The only light a mother, a Christian mother and father should give that child is the Bible and the Word of God, Jesus Christ. Just take a side note, little here, little little commercial break, if you don't mind. Rachel, you are in big trouble. We'll return back to our Bible study. A Christian parent should not give them the light of artificial light, but should give them comfort and, and embracement of the Lord Jesus Christ in a time of prayer. Nor for the arrow that fleeth by day. As far as we've been reading through the book of Psalms, that God has an arrow. Well, who's against God? Who, who is the complete opposite of God that Satan has arrows too? Except for in Psalm, uh, Revelation chapter uh, 5, where he comes in with just a bow of peace and no arrow. I guess Cupid has an arrow too that kills. And then Robin Hood uses an arrow. So you gotta be careful. Nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness. Nor for the destruction that wastes at noontime. Listen, if you are under God's wing, if you are under God's protection, if you are alone with God, even if you get cancer, even if you get leprosy, even if you get a disease, or you've been attacked by by Satan, he'll give you rest and comfort. What is the worst thing that Satan could do to you? Kill you and bring you home to the Lord Jesus Christ? The death of a saint brings joy and is an answer to God's prayer. There's a welcome to me when a saint comes home that is honorable to the Lord and has done what he's supposed to do. Listen, that prodigal son, that father was happy. He called a party. And find me in that in that chapter of uh, was it, Luke 17, I think it is. Find me in that, that chapter where the party ends. It doesn't. A thousand shall fall at thy side. That's a great. And ten thousand at thy right hand. 
but it shall not come nigh to thee. Now, what is the it? The pestilence, the destruction, the arrow, the, the fear. Listen, in 2 Timothy chapter 1, God, it says that God has not given us the spirit of fear. You can get victory over fear without drugs. It shall not come nigh to thee. You shouldn't have fear. But we do. And that is a lack of faith we have in God. Only with thine eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Don't worry about what that guy does to you. On the job site, in the church, uh, in your own family, your friends, or your neighbors. Don't worry about it. God will give them their just desserts. And when somebody picks on you because you do right, yea, all they that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. God takes it personally. When he came across to Paul, he said, Why hast thou persecuted me? You know? Why did you pick on Stiley Hayward? No. That's not going to be at the judgment seat of Christ. That's not going to be at the judgment, great white throne judgment. That's not going to be. You say, what are you talking about? It's going to be, why did you pick, why did you pick on me, Jesus Christ speaking? Well, I didn't pick, I picked on him, on the, uh, Stiley Hayward. You picked on me. It's not about Stiley Hayward. All he was was a vessel. Now, why did you go against what I told that man to do? And, and everything that he said and done, yeah, he's a sinner, but he's been judged. Everything I told him to do that he done, I had him do it. Why did you go against me? You will see the reward of the wicked, saved or lost. You say, what do you mean by saved? They'll lose rewards what they do to you. Imagine a Christian losing rewards for how his treatment for a fellow Christian that was trying to do right. And the judgment seat of Christ would just be another nail in, well, I guess another flame in the lake of fire. Because thou has made the Lord, because thou has made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation. Oh. That getting off with, to God is to be a lasting, your dwelling place. A place that you call home. You as a Christian needs to find a place to get off alone. Say, hey, listen, I'm going off to be with the Lord. Leave me alone. Don't come looking for me. Turn off the cell phone. Turn off everything that needs a battery. Every Christian should have two points of a home. One of them is getting back to Bethel. You say, what's that? Getting back to where you were saved. Now, you may not physically where you were saved. I was saved in Connecticut. I'm living in Florida. There's no possibility I can go to where I got saved. But I can reflect back to that time where the Lord and I met for the first time and where I put my faith in Him and the Holy Spirit came and dwelled with me. Go back to that. The Bible speaks that there was a church that lost their first love. Have you gone back to where your first love is? And then do you have a place of home where, Lord, the world is beating on me. Christians are beating on me. Employers are beating on me. Lord, I, I'm hurting. I, I'm sorrowful. I've got troubles. I've got problems. Lord, take me and comfort me. Why don't people have a place like that? Because you're afraid of what, what your Father in Heaven will tell you. First of all, He'll tell you to shut up and listen to me. I don't want to hear any words. Shut up. And then you're afraid that He may tell you you are the problem. And start naming your sins one by one. 
And who wants conviction? And then seriously get off to pray for others rather than self. There shall no evil befall thee. You ain't going to hell. You can't sell yourself to Satan if you're a born again Christian. How can you? You've been bought by the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, I had these troubles. I had these problems. According to the Bible, they're not evil. They may be Satan attacking you because you're right, doing right, holy. They may be because you've done something stupid in your life. It may be because God's trying to trying to, to whip you because you're bad. It may be because God's trying to strengthen you. If God's trying to strengthen you, if God's trying to create you as a Christian, don't you dare call it evil. If he wants you to be a stronger Christian, are you going to say that God's doing evil to you? Be careful what you say. Well, what if Satan's doing it in my life? Count it as a blessing that it's a mark to guess what? He's got you in his sights. Satan don't put a worldly Christian in his sights. Neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. Oh, I've been plagued. I've got these things. Thy dwelling. Where is your dwelling? Daytona. No, it's not. No, it's not. No, it's not. What did Paul say? What did Paul say? He says, I'm in the presence of God. Your dwellings are right in heaven. Your dwellings in New Jerusalem. You're just a pilgrim. This is not your dwelling place. Paul says, I am seated in heavenly places. Too many Christians buckle in and move into the world, and that's not where you are to be. You are an ambassador, the Bible says. The ambassador does not stay and live his life where what the country he goes to. No, his passport, his orientation is the country that sent him. Our passport, our orientation that has sent us here is New Jerusalem, the mother of us all. Oh, we just read about a mother in verse 4. Have you run home to God in New Jerusalem to get comfort and strength and get out of this world for a little temple time? And if you haven't, it is the flesh and Satan that's preventing you from doing it. Watch this one. Verse 11, For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in thy hands Least thou dash thy feet against a stone. Where did those two verses come up? Those are the two verses, one of the parts that Satan quotes to Jesus. In a chapter that's about the safety in God. Now don't go run that he shall give his angels charge over thee. You know, we, got, uh, we got angels out there, guardian angels. That's talking about the Lord Jesus Christ. I was going to say that. But the thee there is Jesus Christ. It's not us. Angels came and ministered to Jesus. Angels came and helped Jesus. Now do angels help men? Yes, they do. But that verse Satan said, Satan said, was Jesus Christ. Now Jesus said that there's angels that watch over children. Aren't we the children of God? <laughs> you say, how far can you take that? Well, we're, we're not going to discuss guardian angels. We're talking about the Lord Jesus Christ. And verse 12, I guess Jesus never stubbed his toe. You mean his walk, his literal physical walk was right. Watch this. 
Now, if you're going to say, because of this verse, I have a guardian angel, I'll show you where you're in error. You know Satan did not quote verse 13. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder and a young lion and the dragon shall trample under feet. Shall thou trample under feet? Who is verse 13 talking about? It's talking about Satan. Oh, Satan forgot to quote that verse. Lord Jesus, yo, hey, listen, listen, listen. The angels are going to protect you against, against dashing your feet against a stone. But I'm not going to say that you're going to conquer me. He left that out, didn't he? Genesis 3.15, Satan did not say in Matthew and Luke that you're going to conquer me. Bow down and worship me, Jesus. Satan forgot something. And thou, okay, so if that thou, if your guardian angels are verse 11, thou, so you're going to beat the lion, the elder, and the dragon. That is not you. Even though some preachers I do know, and I have a testimony, and here now, their lips out of pul uh, the pulpit, oh, I'm going to get old smutty face with a, with a water gun. Oh, no, you're not. Match that with Genesis 3.15 at 13. You know what? I'm gonna, if somebody's listening, I'm going to set them at the Catholic Church. But do you know who the Catholic Church has as a picture with, her, with the foot standing on the elder's head? You won't believe this. If you go look on an internet search... This name and snake and foot, you'll find a picture on Yahoo or Google if you do an image search. It is, drum roll please, Mary. Mary is, has her head, has her foot on a snake standing on a rock. Taking the deity and the conquerness and the victorious Jesus Christ. And his title. Go look up the picture on the internet. Or maybe I'll find the picture and I'll put it on this video for you to see it. If I remember. It is the Lord Jesus Christ, not Mary, not no man, that will get victory over Satan. Even Michael the archangel would not contend with Moses. I mean, with Satan over Moses' body. Michael. The only archangel in heaven. Don't you believe Gabriel is an archangel? Study your Bible. Nowhere it says that Gabriel is an archangel. The archangel, when he's contending with, with, with i got to stop contending with Moses. When he's contending with Satan, he rebukes Satan in the name of the Lord, God. If Michael ain't got the power, you don't. Because he has set his love upon me. Now there's a paragraph in verse 14. Therefore will I deliver him. Now because he set his love on me, you say, well that's Jesus to me. But because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. The me is God, the I is God. Because he, that's the man, the paragraph. Because we have set our love upon him, for he first loved us, therefore will God deliver him. God will deliver us because we love the Son. How did we get to know love? For God is love. The only way we could get to know love is through Jesus Christ and being a child of God and having God as our Father. I will set him on high because he has known my name. Do you know the name of the Lord Jesus Christ? Set on high. We're going to heaven. The north of the north. You can't get any more north than heaven. 
And what's the name that you need to know? Buddha? Sorry. Muhammad? Sorry. Mary? Sorry. Pope? Whatever? Sorry. The name that's above all names, the Lord Jesus Christ, is the name that you are need to know. For at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. There is no greater, there is no other name given among heaven that whereby a man must be saved. Acts 4 12. He shall call upon me. He. That's the he in verse 14. I shall call upon God, and God will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. Look at that. You put God as your refuge. You put God as your Savior. And when you're in trouble, He will take care of you. He will help you. Read Pilgrim's Progress. I will deliver him and honor him. Wow. With long life. Will I satisfy him and show him my salvation? That long life. Jesus died 33 and a half years old. That's not long. What do we read yesterday? It says in verse chapter 90. Uh, where is it? Where is it? 90. Verse 10. The days of our years are three score years and 10, 70. And by reason of strength be four score years, 80. Jesus didn't make it to 70 years old. He died more than half, less than half of 70. Half of 70 is 35. Thank you. You do what God's supposed to. You get off in that, that, that safety in God. You get off by God by your own. And you do what you be with God. He'll give you long life. You know how you keep life going? God told you don't drink. Don't drink. Drinking will, will defeat your life. Don't smoke, the Bible says. You smoke, you defeat your life. Don't mess around with women who are not your wife. You know how you defeat that? You mess around with women who are not your wife. Honor thy mother and father. You don't do that. The Bible says your life will be cut off early. Honor and love the Lord and respect Him, and you'll get long life. And with that long life, you go back verses 1 all the way down to, to uh, 10. Yea, though you will suffer troubles and problems and tribulation, the peace that God will give you will be like you're not even going through anything if you live right and do right. The hard time, the frustrations you get is when you get your eyes off God. And you don't go off to be alone with God. And you don't run to that fortress. And with everything that we see, even the Lord Jesus Christ went through problems and troubles and, and situations. And he was tempted just, we got, just like we are tempted of the, tem of, the, of the tempter, Satan himself. And God was with him every step of the way. And at the end, comforted him. And ministered to him. And Jesus frequently got off by himself to be with God, his Father, being God himself. If Jesus needed to do it, you think you as a lowly Christian, as a lowly man, oh, I don't need to do that. You're lying to yourself. And I have failed in this department. But if God were to record in his books, and I believe he does, how many minutes have you been off alone with God all by yourself? No one else around. Or you may be sleeping, maybe in your bed. That time I've been with the Lord in peace and quietness and let him speak to me as he's told me sins in my life unconfessed. Safety is in God. Let it be always in God and not anything else.
Salvation's plan is just a fairy tale. But their lies don't change the truth that Jesus died for you. And the word says his return. 